Well, our Honda Accord's bouncing all over the place, and there's a rattle up under the hood. At 160,000 miles, this is a perfect candidate for struts. And that's where we'll start today on Tech Garage. See you in the shop. Welcome to Tech Garage presented by Advanced Auto Parts. Now a basketball, it's supposed to bounce like that, but a car, not so much. Our Honda Accord's bouncing like a baby buggy. You know, we got some rattles in there, and this thing's got 160,000 miles. Brian, this one's a perfect candidate for some struts. Truly a prime candidate. You know, this is one of the slowest eroding segments on any vehicle that there is. It's kind of like your headlights. You know, they fade over time, they dim over time, but hopefully your eyes are healthy and you don't realize that. You kind of compensate for it. Similarly, with shocks and struts, they wear out, and even factory springs over time and if you drive the vehicle every day you don't realize wow these things are actually wearing out and there's huge implications as it relates to stopping safety and handling and all those things so here's a demo John <clears throat> here's the front end of our creeper you'll be the front end of the car all right and as these struts and, and shocks and springs sag and fade over time what happens to the front end down it's gonna go which is the same as raising the rear end of the vehicle so again huge implications when it comes to stopping and handling in all types of conditions and not only this I mean this affects ride height doesn't it absolutely and so so anybody can measure ride height before you start this project and it's really important that you look it up and do your research and understand what your vehicle is supposed to have. There's also certain spots to measure ride height but just take note of your ride height and you're going to see at the end of this project you're going to have a better handling vehicle that will do the right thing in all conditions. Your ride height, critical. This talks about vehicle geometry. Once that drops, vehicle geometry is off, center line, thrust angle, we can't even align the car really. You put it to specifications, it's never going to hold, you're going to have tire wear patterns all kinds of things going on. You know, this job isn't anywhere near as hard as people think it is, and I think we'll show you that today. Exactly. Why don't you get started on that strut? I got a cool demo over here. Awesome. I'll go ahead and show them all about all right. it. Hey, B, heads up. All right, now we've got our LGA Create over here. Actually sent us this front end suspension trainer. This is really cool. It's got electric power steering motor, a rack, and it works. But the cool part is we're going to focus right over here on the strut assembly. And let's start with the basics. This is actually a whole strut assembly. It bolts down here to the spindle, and then it comes up to the frame of the vehicle. Now, what is a strut assembly? It actually has a shock absorber, a strut inside of here. You can see this one right here. It's inside. And then you're going to have a spindle. Bring. They're going to be separate pieces. We'll show you a little later a strut compressor and how we're going to go about it to take it apart, but they're two different things. Now the spring, those control ride height. The struts or the shocks control spring oscillations. That's how it works. So if you're bouncing like a baby buggy, you may just need some struts. If your ride height's off, you're going to need some springs. Now you can look inside and see how they actually work. This is pretty cool because I got a cutaway here and you can see this right here. You can see the actual orifice tubes right here. That's what happens. There's oil on both sides of this and what happens is the oil compress, it's going to go through a little bit of orifice tubes here and that's going to cause the compression and the rebound as it goes up and down. This is cool because it's a gas shock and down here is going to be some gas right here. This is going to pressurize up on that oil and keep any aeration from happening. Man, this thing makes a really nice ride. And that's what we're going to actually put on there with some struts. Now, how does a strut work? Well, it turns back and forth, so it has to go with the vehicle. You can see it here. As I turn to the right and I turn to the left, it has to keep that vehicle geometry correct. And up top, a couple things we want to check is a rotator plate. This is actually under there, and it's rotating to the right or to the left. Squeaks, rattles, things like that. You can see it's spinning. The strut's attached to the frame, and the rotator plate spins back and forth. That's one thing you want to check. Brian mentioned earlier ride height. That's another thing. Now you can just look for some visual leaks. You can look at the actual strut itself. Make sure you don't have any leaking in there, rattling, the bushings in there. Make sure they're all in good shape. And if you suspect that you have a bad shock or strut, you can actually unbolt them. We did a jounce test on ours and bounced up and down, but you can see this one. I can barely even push it in. And this one here, goes in real easy. I mean, it's going in like nothing. So that would give you a good understanding on how to look at and test your struts and shocks. Brian's in action, taking that one apart. Let's see how he's coming along. 
This is a classic McPherson strut assembly here. And honestly, these are pretty standard on vehicles, but different vehicles have different types of mounts. So our Honda is a little bit unique. We've got down in the lower, we've got two mounting bolts, an upper and a lower mounting bolt. I'm gonna go ahead and back them out. Now you'll notice up on the top of the strut, there's three bolts that punch up through the rotator plate and bearing plate to hold that in from the top. I've got two nuts removed, but one holding it there because I don't want this strut to fall down, crush my hands, or do any damage to a brake hose or anything as it comes down out. So it's literally going to be hanging here as soon as I get this lower mounting bolt out. Pretty simple to do. Right tool for the job. Okay. Good there, we're gonna back this lower bolt out. You may have to give it a little bit of encouragement, that's why I have a hammer laying here. So far, so good. We're gonna move this bracket down and away. This is where the strut cartridge is now hanging on its own and didn't fall down out. Good plan. So the strut cartridge is hanging there. Get a good grip. It's not terribly heavy on this car. Release the nut. Watch the brake hose as you come down and out. You may have to give it a little bit of encouragement to get it to go where you want it to go. Fitment is usually the hardest part. And there is the old worn strut with the factory spring on it. Now, we're fortunate that Monroe makes quick struts. And this is what we're gonna put on the vehicle in just a minute. Now, if your vehicle isn't engineered this way, this can only go in one way. You might want to mark yours and make sure you get it right because the orientation of this spring and the rotator plate is imperative for this vehicle to perform and operate safely. So back in with the new. Up, it's seated. Let me get a nut on here to hold it. Spin it on. Now that strut assembly is hanging in there. I don't have to try to hold it. No damage is going to be done to the brake line. Now, if you're not using a quick strut, you're going to have to take your factory spring and roll it over to the new strut. That has got to be done safely. And after the break, John's going to show you exactly how to do that the right way. Stay with us on Tech Garage, presented by Advanced Auto Parts. Tech Garage, presented by Advance Auto Parts, is being brought to you by Deco, the original power in motion. Dustless blasting, it's the future of surface preparation. Custom Auto Sound, the originator of classic car OEM fit radio since 1977. And by Advance Auto Parts, let's get you back on the road. Well, welcome back to Tech Garage presented by Advance Auto Parts. Brian's working hard on the quick strut assembly. Now, what is the quick strut assembly? It's the whole deal right here. And this is nice because you're getting the spring instead of just the strut. Also, it controls ride height, so that's important as well. A new rotator plate, the whole nine yards. This is nice. But there's an important piece of this right here, and it's right here. It says, don't remove that top nut. Please, don't remove that top nut. This spring here is under immense amount of compression, and this thing could do some serious damage. So you're going to have to get a professional machine, and we got one right here with our Brannock spring compressor. Now, what I did is I just took the strut that Brian took out, I went ahead and I put it in the machine here, secured it so it's safe, and then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to come down and take the tension off. So as I crank it down once or twice, I pull that tension off, you can actually see right here, the strut come loose. That tells me it's safe now, that it's, go ahead, I can take that nut off. So I'm gonna take this clamp down, and I'm just gonna put it on so the strut doesn't drop down and hit the ground. Then I can come over and I can take the securing nut off at this point, and I know I'm in a safe position. Once I get that off, I can go ahead and release the actual spring on the bottom. Remember the rotator plate right there? Everything's gonna stay intact, we talked about earlier. And then the strut, assembly just comes right out here through the bottom. I'm gonna take the boot and everything with it, bring it down gently, and you can see it right here. This is the actual old strut assembly. There's a few pieces on there we have to switch over. Stuff like the top washer that's on there and the dust boot. I'll pull that off, I'll set that aside. We're gonna reuse it. Now we're just gonna reverse the procedure. I'm gonna get the insulator off of this one here. I'm gonna put it down here so the spring doesn't rattle, index it right, then I'm gonna put the bumper on. Once I put the bumper on, I can go ahead and secure that with the washer right here. And then we can go ahead and put the dust boot on. 
Once I get that on, I got my top washer. Now it's just as simple as go ahead and put it back in the strut compressor, torque that top nut to specifications. Once you do that, you can release the tension and put it on your car. But you know what? Brian's doing it the easy way. He's got the quick strut assembly. Working hard, but doing it the easy way. Let's see how it's coming along. Well, I like to call it working smart, John. There's more than a couple reasons we wanted to use the Monroe Quick Struts on our Accord. This car has over 160,000 miles on it, and I know the factory springs are sagging, not to mention the wear on the struts. Second, practicality and safety. Not everybody has a fancy compression tool like that in their driveway or in their garage, and frankly, these projects late at night on the weekend, they can go bad. So I like to get all the safety I possibly can. And third, my time is worth something. If you think about the amount of time I didn't spend transferring the old springs to the new struts, that's afforded me the time to do all four corners of the vehicle, truly reestablishing that factory ride height. And of course, one final reminder here, proper torque specs on the bottom, there's a wishbone mount down there, we've got them torqued properly, the wheel is torqued properly, we want that true relationship going down the road, and I've, I've torqued the top mounting bolts once, I'm going to do it a second time, now that the suspension is loaded back up. Calls for 37 pounds, pretty easy to do. We got the other two, there we go. So we're in good shape. And a final reminder, the most important next step, a professional alignment. Here's why. Now, no matter any time you do any suspension work, steering work, or definitely with struts, you're going to have to get an alignment. You have to take it down and get it professionally done. Now, why? Well, we're talking a couple of angles here. Caster is the forward and rearward tilt of that steering axis, and that's controlled by those top bolts Brian took out. You want to index them, mark them, make sure they're at least close. Another one is camber. You're actually going to have positive camber where the wheel's tilting out like this, and then there's negative camber where it's tilting in. Brian's trying to get it to zero right there and when he tightens the bolts. And the car's hanging, so it could be hanging this way or that way. Get it normal, tighten it up, and you still have to take it to an alignment shop. Well, we finished up with our Honda. Let's go give it a jounce test and see how the struts fared. John, I think I did some good work, buddy. I think you did too. Well, you remember earlier when we actually jounce test the car? Man, it was bouncing like a baby buggy. You can see the struts were totally worn out. Four or five rebounds. Now, your honors, buddy, you All did the right, work. Check this see. out. Man, there's nothing to that. One up and down. Not only are you getting safety, you're getting stability. We got this one wrapped up. Big difference. Now, stay with us for the RSX Resurrection Project. We're going to pull it in. You know, we got struts, we got some lowering springs, and some sway bars. Man, we're going to put that thing in the weeds. You don't want to miss it. We'll be right back with more Tech Garage presented by Advanced Auto Parts. Welcome back to Tech Garage presented by Advanced Auto Parts. Well, we got our project, RSX Resurrection, in the shop, and I got to tell you, it's looking pretty good. We got our drilled and slotted rotors here, which is nice. Now we're taking it to the next level. We're going to deal with the struts and the springs. And iBox sent us some lowering springs here, which is really cool because we took our lowering springs and we put them in with our Monroe shocks you can see right here, and it made a perfect combination where we're dropping it down to about an inch, maybe two inches. We're getting it down in the weeds. Can't wait to see how this stance is going to be. But there's even more to the package. While we're up in the front, we're going to go ahead and use this energy suspension. We're going to go ahead and do all the control arm bushings in there, which is real nice. They even give you the lubricant to put them in. We'll get that suspension all stiffened up, and that'll be really, really nice. Also, we're going to put in some sway bars. Now, Eibach also sent us these sway bars, and when you see the old anemic sway bar and you see the difference between the two, you'll know what this is all about. Sway bars help with body roll. As the car's going to the left and right, and you can see the thickness of them right here. We got a front one. We also have some energy suspension bushings to secure them with, and then we got a rear one Brian's working on right now. And we're also going to add these Moog sway bar links. Now, I like these Moog sway bar links because you can see they have a Zerk fitting right here, and we can actually grease them for a longer life. And when you see the old ones, you understand why we're replacing them with these problem solvers right here. I see some aggressive driving with this car in the future. Let's join Brian and see how it's going. All right, John, we're actually in great shape back here. I'm taking the final mounting bolt out of the old Acura sway bar. Now, we are going to save these straps, but we're, of course, not going to reuse the bushings. So here's the old spaghetti-like Acura sway bar. 
gone, and I'm excited about putting this new guy in. Now, the first thing we need to look at back here, we've got the rear strut assemblies completely done. That's the new Eibach variable rate spring, which you can tell the difference up here at the top of the coil, the gaps. What that means is when you're out on track and you're loading it up and you're really leaning the car into a turn, it's gonna push back nicely and give you a better contact patch at all four corners of the vehicle. So much better performance there. That whole assembly I'm very excited about. We got one final torque tightening to do on both of those strut assemblies, but we're in good shape. Next step is to take the new Moog sway bar connections, work them in. They, of course, only go in one way up here. And I've got the other side in. A good tip is leave these a little bit loose so you give yourself some slack to work that sway bar down onto them. Then you go back and do a final tightening. And again, the other side is in. Now, the bushings that come with the sway bar, make sure you use the lube they provide. You don't want any binding on this sway bar. It needs to move and flex to do its job. So let me get this in. And this is where if you've got a buddy, call for a second set of hands because I gotta tell you, this new sway bar weighs a lot more. It is much beefier. So hey, John, if you got a second, Absolutely, yeah, this thing is huge compared to the other one. That thing was like a piece of spaghetti, you're right. <laughs> yeah. Let me get my side in, clear this muffler. Okay, I'm good. All right. Mounting strap back in. Now these bolts will have to be torqued to spec. There's a heck of a load back here on this suspension. It's a good idea to leave them loose for a little while here until we can get it all lined up. Yep. Get that started. Yep. See if you can get your, your new, man, I love those Zerk fittings. That's everything. I mean, that's really, these ones are pathetic yep. that come from the factory. Actually, plastic on the inside, that was really, really bad. I mean, they, yeah. they were broke to begin with, no less trying to take them off. Yep. I'm in. You want to get these saddles down? Yep. Go ahead and put Great. those in. Okay. Imagine what this is going to do for the handling. We're flipping for it to see who drives it first. Exactly, I can't wait to see it. I mean, <laughs> with the lower end, the new struts, the new shocks, I mean, the springs. This thing's going to be down on the ground, and then we're going to have a suspension. We're going to have a nice, fun weekend car. Here you go if you need it. Perfect. Let's hit these two. So we about got this thing whooped. Yep. Well, I'm going to head over to Bernie's and look at some more performance angles when it comes to suspension systems. You take a break. I'll meet you over there when we return with more Tech Garage presented by Advance Auto Parts. Tech Garage, presented by Advanced Auto Parts, is being brought to you by MagnaFlow. We've got the power and sound you're looking for. Original Parts Group, the world's largest source for GMA body parts and accessories. Steel Rubber Products, quality crafted rubber parts and weather stripping. And by Advanced Auto Parts. Let's get you back on the road. Welcome back to Tech Garage presented by Advanced Auto Parts. This week's performance playbooks all about suspension. Let's see, I have a major problem. I'm looking up and down this A-Fuel dragster and I don't even see any. Matter of fact, I don't see any ball joints, I don't see any struts, I don't see any shocks. Josh, where's your suspension? John, this car doesn't have a suspension. Well then, how does it flex? I've seen it flex. It's all about 4130 chromoly, which is what the chassis is built out of. And the chassis flexes, there's two aspects to that. When you launch or you take off from the start line, you got some flex there. Tell me about that. The car will actually transfer the weight by flexing the chromoly on takeoff. And your wheels are staggered. I mean, it's actually, that's how much twist you're getting in it? That's correct. Now also, when you come to the stop at the other end, I always see them bouncing. What's that all about? If you try to stop too fast, that's the only way that the chassis actually can absorb what's going on. So that's your suspension built into the actual frame of the car itself. That's pretty cool. Now our Honda's rolling real smooth with our new Monroe struts. But I want to look at a performance angle. So Drew's tackling it over in the shop looking at some performance suspension components. This is our 66 Corvette. Pretty much came in and utilized all the factory components in the car. There's a lot of hidden stuff you don't see, like the bushing, the internal bushings, upper and lower ball joints, um, your spring isolators, uh, your half shafts, your shock bushings, your sway bar bushings. Advanced Auto Parts hooked us up with everything we needed. We got the upper and lower ball joints, your sway bar kit, and upgraded that to polyurethane bushings. We went with a new shock, new spring, 
upgraded thicker sway bar. Uh, like I said, polyurethane links. We don't want it to drive like 1966. We want it to be a little bit stiffer, and that's what we're giving them. That's the performance playbook here at Bernie's. Time to head back. Brian has the email question of the week. John Jose from Kentucky emailed us this week. He's got a 2014 Kia Rio that's pulling pretty hard as he drives down the road, and he wants to know if we think an alignment will fix his problem. Well, it might, but first thing you want to do is make sure that your brakes and your suspension's in good shape, Jose. Pre-alignment inspection's in order first. Then you can go down the road with two fingers on there. If it's pulling out of your hand, it might be alignment problem. First thing I would do, cross the tire. See if it goes away, it may be a tire issue. If not, we talked about alignment earlier. You remember that camber and caster? Well, we said that this out like this was positive camber and that was negative. So on your car, Jose, if you have one over here that's negative and you have one over here that's positive, you can almost see this car is wanting to go to the right if we're going in this direction. That's going to pull really, really bad. Now also, caster is a pull too, but it's not a tire wearing angle. You may have one wheel more forward than the other. It's going to pull to the most negative caster. But you know, a good look that he can do would be tire wear patterns. And check out this graphic. You can see the first one on there. That's feathering wear from toe in and toe out. And on the right, Check your tire for that, Jose. That's actually camber wear patterns. The other two, underinflation on the left, overinflation on the right, Brian. And that cupping can be a worn strut. So if you end up replacing the struts like we did on our Accord, keep in mind that had a very specific engineered fit going back in. But if you've got a more traditional strut assembly, don't forget, caster is affected up at the top of the strut assembly, camber down here at the bottom. So you may want to make some marks on your setup before you disassemble it and put in your new struts. And our new struts, speaking of that, that Accord is riding smooth. We just need to get it at alignment shop so it don't end up like Jose's car. RSX on the other hand, ooh, performance is there. Awesome, I love the Accord as well, getting that ride height back like we had from the factory back in the day. Don't forget, if you need us during the week, check us out on YouTube or Twitter, and we look forward to helping you with your next project. And we'll see you next week on Tech Garage, where we're gonna get you back on the road. Production assistance for Tech Garage is provided by Chipola College, located in Mariana, Florida. Founded in 1947, Chipola was recently ranked as one of the top three community colleges in the United States.